SpaceX may have run into a big problem with the Raptor engine. The company is relying on the revolutionary new engine to power the next generation of spacecraft, which will one day carry man to Mars. However, those plans may hit a massive roadblock due to production issues. Let's take a closer look. SpaceX was founded by Elon Musk, a South African-born businessman and entrepreneur. At age 30, Musk made his initial fortune by selling his two successful companies, Zip2, which he sold for $307 million in 1999, and PayPal, which eBay purchased for $1.5 billion in 2002. Musk decided his next major venture would be a privately funded space company. Initially, Musk had the idea of sending a greenhouse dubbed the Mars Oasis to the Red Planet. His goal was to drum up public interest in exploration while also providing a scientific base on Mars. But the cost ended up being too high, and instead Musk started a space flight company called Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX, now based in the Los Angeles suburb of Hawthorne, California. He spent a third of his reported fortune, $100 million, to get SpaceX going. There was skepticism that he would be successful, which persisted into SpaceX's first years. After spending 18 months toiling privately on a spacecraft, SpaceX unveiled the craft in 2006 under the name Dragon. Musk was already an experienced businessman when he started SpaceX, and he strongly believed that more frequent and reliable launches would bring down the cost of exploration. So he sought out a stable customer that could fund the early development of a rocket, NASA. His goal for SpaceX was to develop the first privately built liquid-fueled booster to make it into orbit, which he called the Falcon 1. The company experienced a steep learning curve on the road to orbit. It took four tries to get Falcon 1 flying successfully, with previous attempts derailed by problems such as fuel leaks and a rocket stage collision. But eventually, Falcon 1 made two successful flights on September 28, 2008 and July 14, 2009. The 2009 launch also placed the Malaysian Razak Sat satellite into orbit. In 2006, SpaceX received $278 million from NASA under the agency's Commercial Orbital Transportation Services demonstration program, which was created to spur the development of systems that could transport cargo commercially to the ISS. The addition of a few more milestones eventually boosted the total contract value up to $396 million. SpaceX was selected for the program along with rocket plane Kistler, but RPK's contract was terminated with only partial payment after the company failed to meet the required milestones. Multiple companies participated in the COTS program in the early stages in funded or unfunded contracts. In 2008, NASA awarded two contracts for commercial resupply services. SpaceX received a contract for 12 flights, and Orbital Sciences Corporation received a contract for eight. The workhorse rocket of the SpaceX fleet is the Falcon 9, and one of its features is reusability. Falcon 9 has much more cargo than Falcon 1 at around 28,991 pounds to low Earth orbit compared to Falcon 1's capacity of 1,480 pounds. The first Falcon 9 booster landing took place on December 21, 2015, and SpaceX now strives to make its boosters retrievable as a matter of course. They generally land on a robotic drone ship near the launch pad. Many of the Falcon 9 boosters have been used multiple times to reduce launching costs. A more powerful rocket, known as Falcon Heavy, made its debut on February 6, 2018, meeting almost all of its major milestones. Falcon Heavy successfully flew to orbit, carrying a Tesla Roadster and a space-suited mannequin nicknamed Starman. SpaceX ran a live stream of the launch and the Roadster's first few hours in space, which attracted attention from all over the world. The two rocket boosters landed successfully near Kennedy Space Center as expected, but the core stage hit the ocean at 300 miles per hour, which was too fast, and it didn't survive the impact. Falcon Heavy then performed an engine burn in space that is expected to bring the Roadster at least as far as Mars's orbit. April 2019 saw a setback for SpaceX when a test of the Crew Dragon spacecraft intended to bring NASA astronauts to space experienced a malfunction while on the ground. This created a smoke plume visible for miles around Cape Canaveral, Florida. The incident set back the company's timeline for bringing people to the International Space Station. That said, the company has recovered and has been bringing people to orbit with few issues since the debut crewed mission in 2020. The next and most crucial milestone for SpaceX was space station delivery. Dragon, riding a Falcon 9 rocket, delivered its first cargo to the space station in May 2012 under a test flight for the COTS program. 
The launch was delayed for a few days because of an engine problem, but the rocket lifted off safely on the next try. Spaceflight observers committed SpaceX's ability to send a cargo spacecraft to the ISS. Private spaceflight hadn't fulfilled the first of its regular commercial flights to the space station in October 2012. That flight achieved most of its objectives, but it experienced a partial rocket failure during launch. The failure ended up straining a satellite, Orbcom OG-2, in an abnormally low orbit, which led to the mission's failure. A new version of Dragon's cargo variants began flying in December 2020 and has executed all five of its planned missions successfully to date. With such lofty plans for the future, a lot depends on the performance of the Raptor engines, which are at the core of every new rocket used by SpaceX. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states that Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The second stage Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. Elon Musk has noted that in the future, the ship is likely to gain three more vacuum-optimized engines once they increase the length of the ship. Raptor is constructed from SpaceX's proprietary SX-500 alloy, copper, aluminum, and steel alloys. There is no information to suggest that these have significantly changed between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. The engine relies on a small amount of 3D printing. However, SpaceX is trying to remove as much 3D printing as possible due to the inability to scale, high cost, and low manufacturing rate. One of Raptor's most impressive specs is its gimbling range. The engine can gimbal 15 degrees on the Y and Z axes, which is needed for the flip and burn landing the Starship does. A gimbal range of 15 degrees is a lot. For comparison, the RS-25 gimbals to 12.5 degrees, and the SpaceX Merlin engine gimbals to 5 degrees on the first stage. At the beginning of 2022, the first Raptor 2 was spotted, marking the end of Raptor 1. After Raptor 2 production began, SpaceX stopped producing all Raptor 1.5 engines. Compared to the original Raptor, Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed, transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree look to a significantly cleaner look. On the original version of Raptor, while SpaceX was learning how to control the engine, a very large amount of development sensors were needed, allowing them to track pressure and temperature throughout Raptor's plumbing. Additionally, many valves were combined into valve plates, helping further simplify plumbing. By removing a large amount of those components, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat proof. A clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by six tons. This is a clear example of Musk's the best part is no part mantra. Problems increasing production of the Raptor engines that power SpaceX's Starship vehicle have led to personnel shakeups at the company and a warning from founder Elon Musk that the company risked bankruptcy if the company could not resolve them. The issue came to a head in an email from Musk to SpaceX employees where Musk warned of a cascading effect of the production crisis of Raptor engines that could affect the deployment of the next generation of its Starlink constellation and overall company finances. Musk warned that the Raptor production crisis is much worse than it seemed a few weeks ago. Musk's email did not go into the specifics of the issues, but his comments likely refer to the recent departure of Will Heltzley, vice president of propulsion at SpaceX. Heltzley, who had been at SpaceX since 2009 and in the role of vice president of propulsion since 2018, left amid problems scaling up the production of Raptor. In the email sent the day after the Thanksgiving holiday, Musk said he had planned to take the holiday weekend off, but instead he will be on the Raptor line all night and through the weekend calling on company employees to do the same. SpaceX needs to produce large numbers of Raptor engines for its Starship vehicle, whose first orbital flight could take place as soon as January. 
The Starship vehicle itself uses six Raptor engines, but its super heavy booster needed for orbital launches currently has 29 engines. The company is building a new factory at its McGregor, Texas test site for large-scale production of Raptor engines, but for now is building the engines at its Hawthorne, California headquarters. Musk said in July the McGregor facility will be able to produce two to four Raptor engines per day, but the company has not stated when that factory will begin operations. This has created a production crunch of SpaceX plans for a series of test flights of Starship in 2022. Musk said at the National Academies meeting that SpaceX is planning for as many as a dozen test flights of Starship in 2022, with the goal of enabling commercial operations to begin in 2023. Musk, though, appeared to be aiming for a much higher launch rate in his email. The risk of bankruptcy is tied to the need to use Starship to deploy the second generation of Starlink satellites. The company is investing massive capital in the production of end-user terminals with a goal of several million units per year. Those terminals depend on the additional bandwidth the second generation of Starlink satellites will provide. These terminals will be useless if the company is unable to solve production issues and get the second generation of Starlink satellites into orbit. If you like this video, you may also enjoy this one, which talks about NASA's detection of the first ever alien signal coming from Proxima B. Do you think SpaceX can solve these production issues? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.